Why don't we play that Tucker clip? Because I wanted to play that with Taylor. Um, it was actually a really good clip that I thought would uh, be a good conversation starter with him. Who is he interviewing here? So Theo, Theo Vaughn is interviewing. Who's Theo Vaughn? He's one of Joe Rogan's comedian friends or something. But listen to what listen to what Tucker says about architecture. Killed off a lot of that, you know. What's interesting is you drive through. I like to hunt and fish, so I've been in a lot of small towns in America because that's where the hunting and the fishing. Oh is. yeah. And um, some of these towns, and especially the county seats mm -hmm. in rural towns, have beautiful courthouses. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, like somebody spent a lot of money and a lot of time to make a beautiful public building. One of those hasn't been built since the Second World War. That is true. Probably since the 30s, since the Depression. Wow. Your state especially. You've got a lot of great public architecture in Louisiana. None of it has been built since Huey Long was murdered. Mm. Okay. So why is that? And it's been replaced by disposable garbage in the dollar store. I'm sorry to single them out, but they are a symbol of it. It's so intentionally ugly. Box stores are so ugly. You're like, there's got to be a purpose behind. You know, architecture exists for a reason. You're sending a message when you build a building, right. when you build anything. And the message of box stores and dollar stores and of public, the DMV is, you mean nothing. We're not going to spend any time or any energy trying to elevate you or please your senses or build anything beautiful. It's ugly on purpose to let you know that you mean nothing. You do not count. Shut up and obey. You're an animal, actually. That was the exact reason, reason for so much uh communist architecture you think like so purpose, just, no purposefully they, pur they've said it as such so th what he went on to talk about there it sounded like he had read e michael jones's barren metal it, like e michael jones's barren metal is all about that like all about like the way cities built tenement buildings and projects and things like that and it was to get human beings elevated away from the environment they're living in so they don't care about the environment they're living in like if you're living up on the 10th floor of a project you don't give a crap about the refuse on the ground over there you yeah. actually care less about your environment now if that's true for a courthouse or a box store how much more true for a church right like you you got to really think about how a uh, uh, an ancient culture was built. You had the cathedral in the center of the town or the church in the center of the town. It was always the highest point because you always want the highest point to be the most important thing to you, right? And everything would be built around it. So you'd have your church in the center and then you start having your community going further and further around out to the peripheries. When you get to modern architecture, you have buildings like the Freedom Tower or the Trade Center. Money is the most important mm -hmm. thing to us. That is now the highest elevation in the city for me, especially in New York City. You know, yeah. I thought that would have been a good thing to bring up with with Taylor. But I mean, Tucker even goes, even your old beautiful churches in New York. You know, I, obviously, I was just there for the first time. But like Holy Innocence, I did not know we were there until I was literally standing in front of it because it is. They've built buildings literally right next to it and, and taller than it. Yep. So even though it's yeah. this old, beautiful, amazing church, you don't realize it's there. Whereas 50, 60 years ago, that was the tallest building. Yeah, on that street. You know, yeah. before they started building these skyscrapers right next to it, which they there was always like a space between them. They butted them right up next to it, then started selling air rights to these buildings to go up as high as they want. It's just crazy. I mean, uh, is St. Patrick's like that? St. Patrick's right is, is, per, is a lonesome building. I wish okay. I, I brought you to St. Pat's because no, I mean, is uh, the St. Patrick's is both beautiful and tragic because yeah. you go in and uh, when I tell you this thing looks like a spaceship getting ready to take off to heaven, <laughs> it is a gothic cathedral. It is breathtakingly beautiful. <laughs> then you go inside and the rob the side altars are stunning and they haven't been used in 60 years yeah they're just it's, museum pieces the cathedral of saint paul is like that too it, they've, except they've turned all the the side altars more into shrine so people still pray at them but they haven't seen a mass and 
decades. It's you know devastating. I mean? I mean, there was a time when that parish was, for, when that church cathedral was first built, there would be 30, 40 priests on those mm-hmm. side altars, all celebrating mass at the same time. You could walk in there at any point in the day and catch yeah. mass at one point. Yeah, the Cathedral of St. Paul has what they call the Shrine of the Nations um, behind the sanctuary because it's like a, a Neo-Roman-esque cathedral. So the big center dome, you know, that, that's kind of where the sanctuary is. So there's a lot of space behind there. And there's like a dozen shrines or side altars behind. And and like, I mean, like it, I, I'm sure there were masses going on at each one and it was um, for all the, the immigrants that had come. So you had St. Boniface for the Germans. You had uh, St. Patrick for the Irish. Um, St. Anthony. Uh, no, it's probably St. Francis for the Italians. I don't know who it was. But, you know, a dozen different shrines for the different nationalities. And like you said, no, it's no, it's for school groups for, you know, a field trip. Yeah, put put the comments up because I don't want to hold my phone. I, I want to I be able to see the comments. I don't want to hold my phone. So, um, oh, so I actually... Uh, E. Michael Jones responded to one of my comments and sent me Did his he? email. He sent me his email. Oh, yeah, you show me that. Yeah, he said he, he said he'll come on with us. <clears throat> and listen, listen, his most re- well. Oh, we put back to the Tucker thing before I get to that because Tucker's theory is we stopped building stuff like that after we dropped the atomic bomb. After we, you know, after we dropped the bomb on Hiroshima, and he says his theory is that. Once men witnessed they had that much power, they thought themselves to be God and that they no longer built things worthy of God because they saw themselves as God. It's a pretty good theory. There's no proof to it. But, oh, yeah, it'll definitely definitely be a locals-only stream, Paul. You know, I I think it's, I don't know necessarily about specifically the atomic weapons, but he is right when he says that stuff hasn't been built since World War II. I mean, like, World War II killed the whole Art Deco movement, right? Like, and not that Art Deco is as beautiful as Baroque or, or Gothic architecture, but it was, it was like an authentically beautiful American style of art and architecture that World War II killed. And I think it's why why build a beautiful building celebrating, you know, like a, a beautiful courthouse? It, it celebrates. The rule of law it celebrates you know your civic yeah because justice should be one of your highest right. ideals so you do build it to be beautiful why i guess why why celebrate that after a war in which humanity just slaughtered each other why yeah. celebrate that after you firebombed tokyo after you firebombed dresden after you annihilated hiroshima and nagasaki like how can you celebrate it yourself as a nation after you've done things like that did you ever see the movie monuments men <clears throat> no i can't stand stupid uh, so uh, i look, can't stand the, those actors for the most part. i understand but, but the movie what it's about is <clears throat> i know is the, a group of men it's a true story a group of men have to go into germany and save the like the most beautiful pieces of art because the, we're about i think to- their their biggest find was actually the ghent altarpiece if i remember yes right. But but it's not just that. It's all Catholic art. Yeah, it's it's so crazy. So it, look, what you're saying is how the, how World War II destroyed the Art Deco movement. It destroyed it so much so that the CIA, like 